What's up, hobby friends? My name is Casey and welcome to another Miniature Rescue. Today, we absolutely need to save this strange little orc conversion that I just found on eBay. Orktober is here. Yes, my absolute favorite time of the year where we do one thing and one thing only paint orcs. I've got a massive month planned for the occasion, and I am super excited to share some of the things I've been buying up off of eBay just for this series of videos. First things first, if you are new to Orktober, then you just need to head to eBay, buy yourself the cheapest set of orcs you can possibly find. Condition doesn't really matter because orcs are perfect minis to really go out on a limb and try pretty much anything. Just paint however you want. It's perfect. Orcs are historically pretty messy. They have blood, dirt, and rust caked on just about everything, and you can really get creative in how you want to paint them. Whatever colors you want, whatever style you like, orcs work with everything. And there is absolutely no way to mess up a mini short of crushing it into an unrecognizable pile of gray goo. And even then, yeah, we probably could save it. The point is, orcs are super fun models to paint with, and the variety gives you total artistic freedom to just explore and paint bravely. That brings us to the first model of this October. I picked up this super weird conversion off of eBay a few months ago for the low, low price of way too much, something like 36 Canadian dollars. But it was just a perfect mini to start off October and I honestly couldn't resist. Let's take a closer look at the mini and see what's going on with this particular conversion. It's one of the weirder ones I've seen on eBay for sure. Now, I really like the idea here, which is a big part of why I wanted to pick this model up. This guy was being advertised as a big boss conversion, which sort of makes sense. He's bigger and more mechanical than the normal orcs, but honestly, the size of this makes me think it could easily be kind of a death dread, one of those bigger mechanical models. Instead, the paint isn't too terrible either. I like the colors and the green skin isn't half bad at all. The biggest problem with this mini right now is that there are some broken pieces on the big claw and it keeps falling over due to the off-centered weight of it, which is probably how the claw got broken in the first place. Who knows, but what I wanna do is take this excellent idea and just go a little bit bigger with it. I wanna see this guy on a Def Dread sized base and balance out that body with the tracks to give him a bit more believability, if you could even call it that. The first thing that needs to happen is throwing the body into my sonic cleaner filled with LA's Totally Awesome to strip down some of that paint. I want to keep most of the colors that this model has, but I want to clean it up a little bit and add more bits to him, so he has to go into a bath first. Right now, my hobby space is undergoing a bit of an overhaul. The area that I normally store everything is being redone and turned into a proper office. New lights are going up into the ceiling, more power, that kind of thing. And pretty soon, I should have some serious storage and display cabinets up in this room. But until that work is finished, I am having to wade through an absolute mess of hobby stuff. It's all over the place, and some of it is covered in sheetrock dust, but I am doing everything I can to make the most usable space for this channel. All of that being said, we are going to need some bits to make this guy even cooler than he already is. So I'll grab a few sprues and terrain bits and get them sorted so we can have some fun. There's a mess in here. The biggest change I want to make to this guy will be what he is sitting on. Right now that little tank he's got is just too small and he doesn't quite sit on there properly. I know I have some Mechanicus terrain that includes a couple of smaller tracked vehicles like this little awesome tractor. This may look familiar to some of you because it's the same type of tractor that I used to fill the guts of the monstrous lime green stampa that I worked on for last October. An epic project that required an absolute ton of work to get back onto the tabletop. One of my all time favorite models and most definitely one of a kind, just like this little guy. So we can replace the lower half with a bigger vehicle. To augment the nice claw that he has, I'll use a larger and scarier claw from the same set that this vehicle came from as a nice addition to his hand. Now that this guy's had a bath, we can go ahead and take him out and start to clean off that paint. A little scrubbing with a toothbrush and the paint pretty much comes right off. I'm also starting to see some of the gray plastic underneath the primer as well as a good amount of green stuff work. A lot of work went into this guy before this. I don't want to scrub too hard and break that green stuff especially some of the tendrils and wires that the previous owner had made. So I'll get as much of that paint off as I can and leave the rest of the primer. That's not usually a big deal as long as the old layer isn't too thick. And luckily this looks pretty good. So a light coat to even it out later on should be more than fine for painting. 
I don't really want him to be sitting on top of this tank. We need to kind of get him inside of it, so to speak, so it doesn't tip over all the time. After cutting off this little pokey stick it had on top, I can snip a few lines into the hole and use a pair of pliers to gently pull that plastic back. That way, it looks like he's broken his way through the top of the little tank, and the metal hides the fact that he doesn't actually have any legs. Even if he did, where would they be? The claw fits surprisingly well into the existing one, so that gets glued right into place. And finally, to continue the theme that the original owner had, I'm gonna wrap a little more of the mini in chains. There is some barbed wire chain looking stuff that kinda hides some of the green stuff joints on his arms, so adding a little more to hold him onto the tank should look pretty good. The more I look at this model, the more ridiculous it gets. I mean, if you tell the story, right, it's an orc that was somehow small enough to be inside of a tank, grow large enough to burst out, and then the rest of them were like, oh, we should probably chain that thing up so he uh, doesn't hurt anybody, and then give him a weapon so he can hurt somebody. I don't know. It's ridiculous. I also used some little bits to modify the Mechanicus control panel on the back of the tractor. A few orky bits to make it look like they kind of hacked this machine and made it their own. And there we go. A salvaged orc vehicle with a monster growing out of the front. It's a pretty perfect death dread in my opinion, and I, I can't wait to field this model. It's gonna be fun. The last thing will be to fix this guy to a base. So I grab out the Def Dread base from my combat patrol box that I still haven't bothered putting together and start stacking some cork on top to get this guy roughly the same height as the actual Def Dread model. That way there aren't any modeling shenanigans with line of sight. He sits up a little higher, looks a little extra epic, moving up that little hill with his tank tracks. It's looking good. Now to prime the model and see what all this work has led up to. The primer really unifies everything and it looks so cool. We took the original idea and just added to it, making it hopefully a little more believable and fleshed out as a concept. And all that's left now is to paint it. Now that this guy's put together and ready to go, we're gonna start painting. Now there's basically two different things on this model. There's the metal, there's the skin. That's about it. There's not actually that much. So we're gonna do a lot of dry brushing, a lot of quick work to get the metals looking really cool. And then we'll come back in and mask some stuff off and do the skin. At least that's the plan. See how it goes. There are quite a few metallic bits on this model. So I'm gonna use a pretty fun airbrush technique to get a nice variety out of those pieces and get them pretty far along really quickly. The first thing is to lay down a layer of gold over everything. This will be the base layer that we add color to in order to get that variety in tones in the metallics. Next up, we'll be adding burnt umber into the shadows, followed by purple just above that. And finally, a little bit of blue for the highlights. This makes all the metals look like it's seen some heat and it's really stressed. To finish it off, we want to dry brush from the top down with silver to pick up all of the details and just brighten everything up. I really like using these colors for metallic parts. It makes them look really good in not a lot of time, and you can really take it any direction you want with how much of each color you want to add. In an army setting, they really stand out on the table and give the army a really beaten down and weathered feeling, which is perfect for orcs. Next up will be base coating the body and armor panels. I really want to preserve as much of the original colors as I can. so taking the initial idea and just kind of stepping it up a notch. So for the most part, we're gonna just do the colors as they are. I use Silly Putty to mask off the armor panels on the shoulders and start with a base coat of dark red. Follow that up with a bright red and finally a little bit of orange. And honestly, the panels look pretty similar to the original. Before moving on, I wanna finish off these by edge highlighting with orange and a bit of silver for the trim on the other one. Once the red is dry, I'll move on to the blue. Same deal, I'll use the Silly Putty to mask off the rest of the mini and paint that blue. It's worth mentioning that Silly Putty is just a great way of masking off parts of a mini. I mean, I've said it a lot of times, but it bears repeating for anyone who has been looking for that perfect masking tool. Just keep in mind that the warmer it gets, the gooier 
it gets. So you kind of need to work quickly with Silly Putty to get it done. Luckily, it's cheap enough that you can keep a couple of eggs around and it's not really a huge deal. That and once the paint is dry, it doesn't have any effect on the Silly Putty. So it won't come off onto your model and the Silly Putty won't tear paint off of your model. All right, so the next thing to knock out is gonna be the skin. The muscle groups on this conversion are really large. I think the body might've been from probably a demon prince originally with a few converted arms. Although I could be wrong. There are a bunch of different parts and pieces mashed together on this guy. Anyways, I'll start with the dark green skin tone, follow that up with a layer of orc skin speed paint. Then I'll grab out my airbrush and lay down some pinkish skin on the face of the model. I personally like orcs with a little bit of skin variety and that pink skin tone works really well. And since I want this guy to play a role in my army, it might as well be kind of similar. Using the airbrush to splatter on some dots of pink gives the skin a bit more variety and a pretty interesting look. I decided to try this out because the last time I was painting skin on a Fabius bio model, I did the same kind of thing with different tones to create a little more texture and interest. Check that out if you haven't seen that one. I'll throw a link in the top right corner. I add a bit of purple wash over the top of everything to break up the muscle groups and put a nice layer over the top of that texture. The wash gives the skin an overall filter, pulling in our texture tones and helping to unify that skin. I also ended up adding some light green highlights on the muscle groups, but pretty much entirely off camera. Since my office is getting that major overhaul right now, I was just dealing with putting together some storage cabinets and getting the rest of the stuff separated out so I can actually organize it. In between doing one thing, paint a little bit of skin, and then do something else, it was a whole thing. It's been a good amount of work, but this space is finally starting to come together even if it doesn't entirely look like it might be right now. The last thing I want to do for this mini was to add some rusty pigment to the base and parts of the model. I feel like the orange color and matte finish really bring everything together and make this model feel way more complete. And again, fitting into my existing army. This is the second eBay specific conversion project that I've taken on and I honestly need to find a lot more. Taking these awesome ideas and expanding on them almost like an ongoing community build is really cool. And I know there are a ton of minis out there that would absolutely be worth taking a look at and adding to. If you happen to come across a mini like that, just leave a comment down below with that eBay link and let me know. October is definitely here and I am very excited for the next couple of videos. It's gonna be a really great time and I hope you can join me as we take on some really crazy orc projects like this one. Thank you again for joining me on another miniature rescue. If you like something about this video, please consider hitting that like button, sharing this video with your hobby friends, and of course, subscribing for more. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video. And of course, here is the final converted death dread. I think we're gonna go with that, it sounds good. Thanks again.